the next uh, parameter that we are going to uh, look at as far as wheel alignment is concerned is what is called as toe okay so what is this uh, toe and what is the impact of toe so for that now what we do is that like we look at the vehicle from the top so for camber we looked at the vehicle from the front for understanding caster we went to the side now to understand toe we look at it from the top so let us say we look at the steered wheels of the uh, of a car right these are the front wheels so of course all these figures are exaggerated to just uh, give us the idea right so if we look at these two front wheels which are steered and we look at it from the top we can see that the front ends are pointing in such a way that the front ends are closer to each other than the rear ends right so these are the front front ends of the two tires right and these are the rear end so one can observe that the front ends are closer than the rear end so there are different uh, ways in which we can represent this so toe is indicative of the difference between the leading and trailing edges of the front wheels when viewed from above the car okay so there is stow so it can also be expressed as the angle made by the central wheel plane with the long longitudinal axis okay so suppose if we draw the longitudinal axis right at the wheel plane so this is also the toe angle okay so some will represent it by means of this toe angle so the uh, the motivation behind this uh, terminology is that like suppose if we stand on our two feet with our toes closer right so that's what is called as toe in right so this schematic essentially corresponds to a state what is called as toe in toe in is a state where the leading edges of the front wheels are closer to each other than the rear wheels and toe out is the other way around right so as we can readily understand toe out we can immediately observe that uh, the trailing edges are going to be closer okay the trailing edges of the front wheels are closer to each other than the front wheels okay that is in the state of toe out Oh, sorry, than the, uh, the oh, no, 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 not uh, re, uh, no. This is the leading edges of the front wheels are closer to each other than the uh, trailing edges. Sorry, right? Not the rear wheels. That's a mistake. Yeah. So this is going to be the trailing edges are going to be closer to each other than the leading edges, right? So that is the correct definition of toe in and toe out. Okay. So, what does a toe uh, influence you know like typically what happens is that like toe influences 
tire wear and why do we have toe in the first place you know like toe is a very important setting for straight line performance once again you know like we have toe in to ensure that you know like the uh, straight line performance of the vehicle is good because for example let us consider a scenario let us say you know there is a perturbation which essentially tends to uh, turn the vehicle let us say to the left without loss of generality. What is going to happen if the vehicle's orientation has to change please note that the inner wheels has to be rotated by a larger angle than the outer wheel. In a state of toe in what has to happen first this wheel has to be rotated to point straight then it has to be rotated even further. So, any perturbation which is not very high is not going to create a significant deviation from the straight line path right with toe in. So, that is why with toe in we get better straight line performance, but what is the trade off? The steering response is going to be slower because when we when the driver wants to steer right in the state of toe in the same uh, what to say the result of the toe in is that to get a required steering angle we need to rotate by a larger angle right. So, to achieve the same steering maneuver. So, it is going to essentially result in slower steering response. Tot essentially has the opposite characteristics right. If you have tot we get faster steering response right, but it is at the expense of straight line stability. That is why if we look at racing cars they will have tot right because you will you want essentially faster uh, steering response and the uh, race car driver can control the vehicle right. But however in passenger cars since stability is important and straight line performance is important we have a slight toe in and th but that comes at the expense of slightly slower steering response ok. So, that is the uh, impact of toe right. So, toe influences tyre wear right why tyre wear because too much toe one side of the tyre is going to just scrub right. So, that is also not good right. So, toe influences tyre wear it influences straight line behavior and also cornering characteristics. So, these are uh, the fact influences of toe. So, excessive toe results in more scrubbing of the tyres ok leading to where tyre wear leading to higher tyre right. So, that is the uh, impact of excessive toe. Then toe in results in better straight line stability right as we just uh, discussed ok and uh, toe out provides a faster steering response steering cornering response ok. So, this is the this is the reason why you know like we use toe in uh, typically in passenger cars and toe out is used in uh, uh, race cars right ok. So, these are some uh, important wheel alignment parameters there are a few other parameters. So, typically this um, uh, what to say camber, caster and toe are important uh, what are called primary wheel alignment parameters by some but there are a few more right. So, let us quickly look at them right. So, the next parameter which is important is what is called as uh, steering axis inclination. So, what is uh, steering axis inclination ok abbreviated as SAI. So, steering axis inclination is going to be the as the name indicates it is the angle made by the steering axis with the 
uh, vertical. So, this is the we are looking at the vehicle from the front. So, we can see that this is the steering axis. So, this is the vertical axis at the front the green dashed line. So, the angle made by the steering axis with the vertical direction is what is called as steering axis inclination. So, steering axis inclination is the angle made by the steering axis with the vertical direction. when viewed from the front of the vehicle. Okay. So, this is also called as kingpin uh, inclination. Okay. So, where instead of ball joints we have uh, kingpins as we uh, discussed before right. So, it is called as kingpin uh, sorry kingpin inclination KPI right on vehicles uh, that have kingpins instead of ball joints right as we discussed heavy vehicles have kingpins right in the steering system. So, that is why it is called kingpin inclination. So, let us look at a few other wheel alignment parameters. The next one is what is called as included angle. So, what is included angle is nothing but this. So, as the name indicates included angle is the angle between the steering axis and the central wheel plane. Okay. So, we can immediately observe that the angle 3 in this diagram is the included angle right. What is angle 1? It is the camber right and what is angle 2? It is the steering axis inclination. So, we can immediately observe that included angle is greater than steering axis inclination with the case of positive camber. Right. So, because this in this figure what we are uh, I have represented is the case of positive camber. So, if you have positive camber included angle is greater than steering axis inclination it is less than steering axis inclination if you have negative camber. So, that is the consequence right. So, that is one more parameter. Another parameter which becomes uh, part of this uh, wheel set of wheel alignment parameters is what is called the scrub radius. So, what is the scrub radius? So, the scrub radius is defined in this way. So, let us look at the schematic. So, if we look at this schematic we can immediately observe that this is the steering axis right. So, we if we project it we see that the steering axis meets the ground closer to the vehicle center compared to the center point of the tire road contact right. So, this case is what is called as positive scrub radius. This distance is what is called scrub radius it is considered positive if you pro if you extend the steering axis and it contacts the ground or the road closer to the vehicle center than the center point of the tire road contact patch. Okay. So, what is indicated in this diagram is positive scrub radius. So, scrub radius 
is the distance between the points of intersection of the steering axis and the central wheel plane with the ground. Okay. So, it is considered positive when the steering axis intersects the ground closer to the center point of the tire road contact patch as shown in this figure. So, what has been illustrated is positive uh, scrub radius. Okay. So, another parameter is what is called as setback. Okay. So, let me quickly define a few more parameters. So, these are also uh, important parameters for wheel alignment. So, and most of them are self explanatory and the consequence also uh, is evident. right? So, more of course, please note that once again I am reiterating that most of these schematics the distances angles are all exaggerated you know just to uh, show the concepts. right? So, and by and large wheel alignment you know like poor wheel alignment is also a, a, a symptom of some component being bent that is why all these alignments get disturbed. Right? So, what is setback? So, essentially one front wheel is behind the other right as we can observe. Okay. So, so what is the uh, consequence of this? This may lead to uncentered steering wheel or uncentered steering. Right? So, that is like if you want to go straight we need to give a small steering input or if you keep the steering wheel straight we will be deviating from the intended straight path. Okay? So, that is the impact of setback. So, this what happens if something uh, some component is bent in the front. Now, even if we have let us say what is called as a rigid axle in the rear we are going to look at uh, uh, suspensions uh, shortly. So, we can have what is called as thrust angle. So, what is this uh, thrust angle? So, it is defined in this way. So, once again it is exaggerated. So, we can see that some component is bent right, or deform excessively. So, we can see that if you look at the rear axles axis you know like a, if you draw the perpendicular line you know like the so called thrust line you know that is not along the longitudinal axis of the vehicle. right? So, this is the uh, longitudinal axis of the vehicle. Now, this angle which is made by these two lines is what is called as a thrust angle. So, thrust angle is nothing but it is the angle made by the rear wheels right with the center line of the vehicle along the longitudinal direction. when viewed from the when viewed from above the vehicle. Okay, so, that is the thrust angle. So, once again a non-zero thrust angle leads to uncentered steering. So, we can see that you know like the uh, wheel alignment parameters need to be maintained in proper ranges for tire wear, straight line uh, performance, and cornering characteristics. You know that's the uh, uh, important uh, concept. Okay, so uh, I will uh, stop here, and then like we would continue uh, in the next class. Thank you. Yeah.